In problem 18, we are dealing with a rotational fault, and we need to find how much rotation uh, took place along the fault plane and which one of the given attitudes for the foot wall is correct. So as you see, the fault is striking towards north, east, south, west, and is dipping towards southeast 70 degrees. Uh, attitudes on the hanging wall is consistent, 335, 40, but on the foot wall, two different attitudes are given. With one of these uh, attitudes are correct, and the other one is wrong. So we need to find which one is possible uh, attitude for rotated block. All right, so I'm going to draw a rotated fault block, and we can discuss what we need to do on the stereo net. So let's say here I have a normal fault, okay, and the other block indeed is going to be something like this. All right, and you noticed that this one is a fault plane. Let me highlight it with another with a color right so this is let's say my fault plane right and <clears throat> we have the hanging wall and we have the foot wall right first of all the definition of the rotational fault is if the displacement along the fault plane is different so here you see we have this much and the displacement is increasing to the other end so right this type of um, observation represents um, a rotational fault plane here so you can if i assume this fault had a continuation all right uh, let's say i'm just drawing the continuation of this fault and and um, I would say this block, okay, somewhere here, you might see the displacement on the fault is zero. And towards the other side of this point, the behavior of the fault is changed, right? So if this is the hanging wall, it's going over the foot wall in that case you're going to have a reverse fault in one side and the normal fault on the other side, right? We don't want to go through this, but these rotational axes, okay, this one is important. And you can actually say I can have a line perpendicular to the fault plane, right? Uh, and we know this one as a pole of the fault. And this is going to be uh, our rotational axis, right? Let me I draw a simplified sketch, and then after that we can move on to the stereo. What I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a fault plane. Let's say this is the fault, right? And here I have the pole of the fault. Okay, let's say this is 90 degrees, right? This is fault plane. And this is pole, right? And the rotation will actually take place along this pole. So what I need to do is uh, I need to find out pole of the fault plane. And then from there we can find out uh, which one of these two given attitudes are correct. Let's move on to the stay unit and uh, we continue from there. The fat plane is 30 and 70 for the dip. And I'm going to show the pole of the fault. Right. This is the fault. And I'm going to show the hanging wall. So we don't really need, because we are working with the rotational problem, I wouldn't plot the planes. All, always I'm going to work with the poles. So from now on, I'm going to only plot the 
uh, poles. So the hanging wall is 335. So 290, 270, 280, 290, 300, 310, 320, 330, 335. Okay, and it's dipping towards northeast 40 degrees. So I'll place this sign on the north south line and I can and I should actually count 40 and draw the plane but I'm not going to draw the plane and I'm just gonna plot the pole so it's 40 degrees 10 20 30 40 and I'm going to name this pole of the hanging wall right so um, I'm gonna plot the two options for the for the foot wall, one is 333, so it's here, 3, 3, 3, so maybe I use another color. So here is 3, 3, 3, and it's dipping towards northeast 67 degrees, so again this one here, 67, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and this is 67 so i'm gonna call this one foot wall one right and the next one is <clears throat> 298 uh, 280, 280 290 298 and it's dipping towards nose northeast 30 degrees so uh, i'm gonna place this one here and that's gonna be the plane and this is gonna be the pole, right? And I'm gonna call this one foot wall two, right? So let's write here, foot wall one is 333 slash 67 and foot wall two is 298 slash 30. So we are going to investigate which one is correct. So, as I mentioned, the rotation will take place along the pole of the fault, and which is this one here. And you remember uh, that, and you remember from the previous problems that you cannot rotate along the deviated line. Right, if the line has plunged, you are not able to rotate along that, except if you are using, you know, the technique that we discussed. Or you need to actually untilt the pole to the uh, to the primitive circle, and then uh, the pole actually is the horizontal line, and then um, you can use the stereo net to rotate the. Um, the poles around that line so what i'm gonna do i will push the pole to the primitive circle in another word the default plane it's going to be perpendicular and the pole it's going to plot it on the primitive circle and then we can use the stair unit to rotate um, the, the other poles as well so let's see how we can do that so i'm going to put the fault along the north south line and as you see if I push the fault plane 20 degrees, right, then I can get into the P prime, right? So I need to do the same for the rest of the points. So from here, I will get to this point here. Okay, let's say I'm going to push this one 20 degrees. This one along that 20 degrees, here 20 degrees, all right? So uh, the new points, this is gonna be foot wall two prime. This is gonna be four degrees, 14, another six. Okay, so we here, let me use this one here. That's the hanging wall prime, right? And for this one, we need to go 20 and I'm gonna end up to here, 
okay and that's my foot wall one prime right so now we are going to work with this uh, primes right so what I'm gonna do I will place the pole uh, or P prime uh, along the north south uh, direction right now let's say this is the pole and I can rotate everything okay like this right so I know at the hanging wall it was fixed right because all the numbers um, are given are um, consistent but the foot wall where it's different right so what I'm gonna do I would say as we mentioned if the fault is not rotational fault then the attitude of the bedding in both sides of the fault would be similar in that case um, you know the pole of the bedding above and below the fault should overlap on top of each other but uh, if we have a rotational fault then one of the poles right the pole of the rotated block it's gonna be rotated okay or it's gonna be actually uh, get some distance from the other pole okay uh, along the small circle let's see what we can do here so we said the fixed one is the hanging wall so we see the hang the hw prime is here and I would actually draw the small circle okay along the small circle in both side of the uh, stereo net and let's see I'm gonna do it on the other end but I need to know which small circle I should do uh, 10 20 30 40 50 let's say 52 right so from the other end 10 20 30 40 50 this is 52 right these two blue lines are the all possible path for the pole of the rotated block right so if the block is rotated 5 degrees 10 degrees 20 degrees 100 degrees let's say 360 degrees right in that case the pole of the rotated block should should travel along these uh, two blue lines right so uh, as you see right now okay the pole of the uh, foot wall one okay it's here and the pole of the foot wall two is here right so as you see the pole of the foot wall one okay which I'm going to highlight it here is reasonable um, attitude for this situation because the corrected or the you know untilted pole of this attitude is sitting along the small circles or rotational path so the hanging wall one which is 333 slash 36 is the correct one and how much rotation took place what you can do is you need to count the angle between hw prime and fw1 prime so one i'm gonna highlight it one point is here another point is here and you need to count this angle all right so here we have eight degrees 18 28 and that's another six that's gonna 30 that's gonna be 34 degrees so this is the amount of rotation right if the block was not rotated then this pole must overlap on top of the other one if the block start rotating the, then the pole it's gonna start moving along these two traces and it depends to the amount of rotation and you see the rotation okay um, is 34 degrees and how much rotation um, and what is the direction of the rotation all right this is the this is the this is the uh, rotational axis. Uh, let's say if this is the line, this is the pole of the hanging wall, and let's say um, 
we need to move the pole to here, right? And you need to have, you know, this kind of rotation, right? So if you remember in the space, we could actually move it like that, right? We could move it like this, this kind of rotation, right? If, if I'm doing like that, I'm rotating clockwise. If I'm doing like that, I'm rotating counterclockwise, right? So when I'm moving this pen like that, it's gonna have a trace like this. This is a counterclockwise movement and this one is a clockwise, right? So because the foot wall one prime is deviated from the hanging wall prime, right? Because this is a fixed one and it's moved that way. In that case, you need this much of rotation, 34 degrees, and it has to be counterclockwise. All right, so by knowing this, we are done with this uh, problem.